Hello everyone and welcome to the Neotech Electronics Series. This video is about decoders, so let's get started. Alright everyone, let's start talking about decoders, shall we? Let's draw the most simple kind of decoder you can think of, right? This has one output, right? By the way, this is an AND gate, okay? Now let's suppose that this has multiple inputs could say three if you want. I mean, you could do four or five. It really doesn't matter. But if you have inputs, right? And let's call them data inputs this time. So we're going to call it data zero, right? And we're going to have the data one and data two, okay? D zero, D one, D two, right? And this is your output Y. So think about it. Y is simply going to equal D0, right? And it would D1 and it would D2. So quite simply, Y is only going to be high if D0 is a 1, D1 is a 1, and D2 is a 1, okay? Now think of it as a code. In other words, that's the code for this decoder to register a 1. The inputs all have to be 1, right? Now obviously I could change this. Suppose I put an inverter bubble here. In other words, instead of an AND, it becomes a NAND gate. And then it would be very similar, except it would be Y bar would be, it would be zero. Y would be zero only when D zero is a one, D one is a one, and D two is a one, right? Now, could we make a variation on that? Well, of course we could. Suppose I asked you this question. Suppose we have an inverter here, right? On D2. I'm sorry, on D1. Okay, so D0 and D2 don't have an inverter on the input, but D1 does. Okay? Now let me go back. Now think about this. When is Y going to be 1? I'm going to make this an AND gate, okay? I just took away the NAND, the NAND characteristics of it. When will Y be 1? Think about it. Well, we know that all of these inputs at this point coming into the gate have to be 1, right? So D0 would be 1, right? Because there's no inverter, right? And we know D2 would have to be 1. But since there's an inverter on D1, D1 would have to be 0, wouldn't it? So this we said this would start off as a 1, this would start off as a 1, but this would start off as a 0. And then it would change to a 1 right here. So you would have all 1s coming in. So now your decoder for this to be, for Y to be 1, or I'll put a 1, D0 would have to be a 1, D1 would have to be a 0, and D2 would have to be a 1. Get it? Now this could, you could get more complicated with more out inputs and more inverters, but you have the basic idea. That is a decoder, right? Now, let's try something. Okay. I want you to write a two, a four, two input and four output truth table. So we're going to have your inputs are going to be D0, right, and D1, okay? Now let's 
this, bring this down. Now let's just draw the tooth table for this. Zero, zero, right? One, zero. Zero, one. And one, one. Got it? Now, let's look at the outputs. This is Y, zero. Y1, Y2, and Y3. So you notice we have multiple outputs, right? Now let me just draw a circuit for you here. Here's D1, here's D0, okay? over here, come down, we have an inverter here. I'll make that look a little bit nicer for you. I want to make sure everyone can see that very clearly. So here's your inverter. Okay. Here's your inverter. And we're going to do the same for D0, alright? strongly recommend you start drawing your circuits like this. It'll be a lot easier. Now, let's look, let's do this one first. So if we draw a two input AND gate, and we're going to call this one Y0, right? That's Y0 right there. So we know that D0 not, D1 not. There you go, all right? So in this case, so look, when D1, for example, is low, it's a zero. At this point here, it's inverted and it becomes a one. And the same with D0. When D0 is a 0, it's inverted over here, and this becomes a 1. So Y0 is going to be a 1 at that point, all right? Well, what's the next one? Well, let's draw another 2 input AND gate. We'll call this one Y1. Now Y1, that's D0, is equal to a 1. Okay, there you go. And D1 is equal to a zero. Got it? So now, when D1 is equal to a zero, let just put a little zero here, and D1 is equal to a one, notice that this, on the, for D1, it gets inverted to a one, so you have a one coming in here and you also have a 1 coming in from D0 because that's not inverted, right? So why why one's going to be 1, right? So let me uh, take those two little bubbles off there. Now, so this one would be 0, 1, 0, 0. Get it? Now, we just finished this one. Let's do this one, shall we? This is when, let's draw another 2 input and gate for you here. This is Y2. And D1 is equal to a 1. Or I'm, yeah, let's, let's do the D0 first. I'm sorry. D0 is equal to a 0. Let's stay consistent. And D1. Get rid of that there. Make it easier. And D1 is equal to a 1. Get it? It's the same argument. D1 is going to be a 1 when it goes in there. And D0, well, it's on the inverted part, so that's also going to be a 1, right? And finally, let's do this one. And 
that going to be? Y3. By the way, we didn't fill this one in, did we? Did I? It's my fault, not yours. And now this one will be 0, 0, 0, 1. Okay? So you can see with Y3, they're both connected to the non-inverting inputs. So when they're both 1s, as they are right here, the output's going to be a 1 for Y3. But everywhere else will be 0. Remember, both inputs have to be high or a 1 for an AND gate to output a high for a 2-input AND gate. All right. This right here is called a 2 by 4 decoder. Notice you have two inputs and you have four outputs. Alright? Now, sometimes with these kind of decoders, they add and enable. So, let me take that off there for you. I just want to get some room here. Now, what's going to happen? Okay. Suppose these are three inputs and I three input AND gates. And I take the third input of every AND gate and I attach it to another another input. Suppose we simply just call this Let's, let's, you know what? Let's do it the same way. Let's just do it the same way we did before, shall we? This is G. And then this. This G bar. So, tell me something. If G is 1, this right here is high. That means at this point right here, they would all be low, wouldn't they? And if you have a 0 as one of the inputs on your AND gate, will it ever be a 1? Will there ever be a 1 output? No. Right. So for this specific circuit, as I've drawn it to be active, okay, for this to be active, G really is going to be active when it's low. I'm going to call that G bar. So that must be a zero. Because if it's zero, then obviously the inverter will output a one. And then all of these gates will have a 1, and then they would work as we just went through it. So you might see something like this. G bar. And you would have to have them all be 0. And if this is a 1, it's not going to matter what these are, are they? Because all the outputs will be zero. Get it? By the way, you can have more than one enable. You could have two enables if you want, or even three. It all depends on the chip you're using. But you get the idea, right? A decoder 
I usually think of it as few to many. Two inputs to four outputs. It could be three inputs to eight outputs. It all depends, right? Okay. So another thing you should be aware of is that sometimes these outputs for the decoders are NAND gates and if that's the case these all change don't they what do you think they become Well, the zeros would become ones, and the ones would become zeros, right? So that means for this one, this would be a zero. This would be one, one, one. This would be one, zero, one, 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 zero, one, 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 zero. And then the X here, obviously, it would be uh, 1, 1, 1, 1. I, I think I'm out of sync there a little bit. I want to look a bit fast. Let me move this up here just a tad, shall we? There we go. That's better. All right. Now, I did this example with a 2 to 4 decoder, but remember, you can have a 3 to 8 decoder, you can have a 4 to 16. There's many types of decoders that you can have. There's many of them out there, all right? Now, in the next part of this video, I'm going to go over a 7-segment display decoder. See you shortly. All right, everybody. I have taken the liberty to sketch a 7-segment display right over here, as you can see. And each segment represents a light emitting diode. L E D. Okay? Now you can see there are seven of them A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. Okay? They aren't numbered generally in most schematics I've seen. They always use these lowercase letters to represent. Uh, one of the segments in, a, in one of these seven segment displays. Now I'm going to draw a light emitting diode for you. There's your ground, here's your VCC, that's your voltage. Now generally when you see a light emitting diode you're going to see something like that. It's like a lightning bolt that's to represent light all right it gives off light so traditional current flows in this direction okay this portion up here before goes through the current goes through the diode right this is the anode okay And this part right here is known as the cathode. Now, here's something I want you to think about. When I say we're going to energize these, it depends how the seven segment display is configured on the inside. So, if you have three of these, suppose you have three of them, three light emitting diodes, right? One, two, three. Right, I'm going to draw here's your arrow. Okay. Now, In this case, if I take these anodes and connect them all together, 
this is called a common anode because they just join them and what they're going to have is they're going to have a resistor here in each one of the cathodes going through right to ground um, so how this is going to work is you always have voltage at the anode but you're going to have to drop this one, when I said it's connected to ground when it's when it's actually active, you're going to have to have current, remember, flowing in this direction. So, you're going to have to drop your this part here, and here, and here. This is a resistor, a current limiting resistor right here to limit the current going through there. You're going to have to drop this low, so it's going to have to be a zero, okay? and then that's going to enable current to flow because remember this is always a one because this is connected to your your power source up here okay so this would be an act of low so if you're going to turn on an LED segment this would be connected to one of the outputs of your decoder and when it drops low it's going to turn it on okay now we're going to draw something slightly different here. And instead of a common anode, we can do it differently, can't we? Why don't we take these and join these together? That's just actually, we can just join those together. And we could simply go to ground. And on this side, you would have resistors on each one of these. And you would have separate inputs for each one of these. In this case, this is called a common cathode. All right. So these areas here are always going to be zero if you're thinking digital. And then your decoder is going to have to output a one to have current flow through your diode and turn it on. All right? So you have to be careful of that when you're building your circuits. But I wanted to make sure we talked about that and you understand it. Now many of you may have already studied Ohm's law but Ohm's law basically V equals I R that's Ohm's law okay in digital generally this is 5 volts okay and these LEDs have and this is in the spec sheet have a limit on the current that can flow through them generally the maximum current you can put through them is about 20 milliamps okay so if you know this is 5 volts you know this is 20 milliamps you can calculate R right so R is going to equal V over I which is going to equal 5 volts over 20 milliamps which is 0 0.02 amps Okay, and you can obviously calculate R, but that's your that's your resistor, and that way it's going to limit the current to 20 milliamps or whatever current is required for the LED that you're using. All right, don't forget always use a current limiting resistor when you're using uh, an LED, or else you you could burn it out. Okay, and that that would be a bad day for you. All right. So I want to keep going here. Now, let's talk about this truth table we have here, okay? We have 
the truth table here and we want to display say we want to display digits 0 through 9 right so I'm going to write them right down here this is the decimal decimal right we got 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and then obviously 10 is made up of decimal 1 and decimal 0 right so you only need these right to be displayed so let's start writing this out so what's 0 0 is going to be what 0 0 0 right let's don't talk about d3 yet right one is going to be what? One, zero, zero. Two is zero, one, zero. Three, one, one, one. Right? Make sure I got those nice in order there. Pull that down just a tad for you. Now what's, what's four going to be? Actually, that's a mistake. I'm sorry. That's a mistake. That's three. Four is going to be zero, zero, one. Got it? Five will be one, zero, one. Six, zero, one, one. Seven, one, one, one. What about eight? Do you see now why you need to have the four bits? Because three bits will not get you there. You can only output seven. That's the maximum, right? That's why you need four bits. So this would be zero, 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 one, and nine would be one, zero, zero, one, okay? And by the way, this would be zero, 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 all the way down to this point, okay? Now, this right here is called BCD. And it stands for binary, because that's what it is, it's binary, coded decimal. And it requires four bits for all ten decimals, zero through nine. Okay? I want to make sure you heard that term before. Binary coded decimals. Alright. Now, let's continue, shall we? So let's look at it this way. Suppose we want to have this be an active zero. Okay, this decoder is an active zero. So if we want to have zero output, we would want to have everything low but G. So that would be zero, 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 one. All right, so remember, think back, we had two types of configurations for the seven segment display, right? A common anode and a common cathode. So obviously if we have a common anode, right, we have to make the input to that specific um, segment below for the current to flow. So in this case, you can see that I can draw it for you. A would be on, B would be on, C would be on, D would be on, E would be on, and F would be on. That makes a zero, doesn't it? G would not be on. If G was on, if G was a zero, that would be an eight, wouldn't it? But right now we're just not, we're not worried about that. 
Okay. Now, let's draw another one, shall we? Let's do the letter one. One, I would like to have it B, so this one's on and that's on. So B and C should be active, right? So A would be a one because it's off. B would be low. C would be low. And everything else would be a one. Get it? Now, how about two? Let's, let, let's just, yeah, let's do one more. Let's do two. How's that? Okay. We'll do two. No big deal. But if we want to do two, right, then you would have this one on, this one on, this one on this one on and this one on. So you would have we'd have A B zero, right? B would be zero, wouldn't it? G would be a zero. D and E would be zero. And C would be a one because it would be off and F would be a one because it would be off go there's two now I think you have the idea you could simply follow this exercise all the way down right and then you would know what segments would have to be active to make your number I'm going to continue this that's it now look all of these are going to have numbers too all right the other the other segments are going to just come on down with ones and zeros right now Think about it. You just studied Carnot maps, didn't you? You can make a Carnot map for this specific output. You would have to make a Carnot map for each one. C, D, E, F, G, and then you could build a circuit for each one. All right? Then when you do that, you could simply Put in the code from your input, your input I call the code, it's just you would arrange your inputs to whatever it should be, and the outputs will all contain what you want it to do. All right. The beauty of it is, instead of you having to create all those circuits, it's done in a chip for you. But that's how you actually determine what the circuits are. Okay. All right, everybody, I hope this has helped you in your understanding of seven segment di displays and decoders. And I will see you again on the next video. Hello, everyone. I wanted to uh, leave you some information because this truth table is not the full truth table. Because we have four inputs here. We have D0, D1, D2, D3. I don't have the space here to continue, but you would continue this now. What, what would come after 9? It would be 10, right? So you would go 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, and then 1, 1, 0, 1. You would continue all the way down to 1, 1, 1, 1, okay? So you would have 16, 16 rows here, okay? All the way down. That's a full truth table. And the other thing I wanted to tell you is once you get past 9, which, and what I drew you, this is the ninth row that matters, right? The output here at this point would be an X, okay, for all of them, all the way across and down. This would all be X's. And X stands for the I don't care state. The output could either be a zero or it could be a one. It doesn't matter, all right? Because remember when you're doing your truth, your Carnot maps from your truth tables, right? 
you need to have a full truth table. And what I drew you there was the point of interest about understanding the seg seven segment display. But if you're actually going to make a Carnot map, you have to have the full truth table. Now, when you're doing your Carnot map, I'm just going to draw a quick one up here, just a two by two, just to show you something. Because you, you're going to run into this probably in your homework, assuming you're taking a course. So this, say, is uh, 0 and 1, and this is 0 and 1. Suppose you had 1, and you're filling this in, you had a truth table, you had an X in it, and then a, a 0, 0, just for the heck of it, right? Well, this X, as you're grouping, that can be either a 1 or a 0, okay? If you ever played cards and you said, uh, I don't know, twos are wild or something like that, you could let that, the two, or deuces are wild, right? You could let that two be any card in the deck. Well, it's kind of the same way with the X in a card on map. You can uh, either have it be a zero or a one. You gotta choose one. And uh, you could use that to help simplify your groupings, okay? I hope this has helped you and uh, clarified this truth table. Thank you.